Hi, I am Michelle Lau, a Garris based in New York. I'm hosting a weekly virtual interview with artists included in the Golden Door exhibition. Golden Door is currently on view at Silver Mine Art Center in Connecticut until January. The exhibition tells a story of becoming American and being American by 11 artists originally from different parts of the world. Today, to kick off the program, I'm speaking with Deborah Presley from New York. Uh, Deborah, you grew up in Ohio and then came to New York to study, is that right? That's right. Mm -hmm. So Deborah has held various different positions uh, in the art institution, in addition to being an uh, artist. You work at a studio museum, at a new museum, but now you are a professor at a Queens College and also spends time between New York City and Hudson, New York, upstate New York. And Deborah's work is included in many institutional collections, including the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. And also Deborah has received many awards, um, including one of the awards I feel a little bit close to by Elizabeth Foundation for the Arts, mm -hmm. Robert Blackburn. I'm on the board of that organization, so I'm very glad. And Deborah also is working with the New York gallery, John Kelly. So today we are going to focus on three works that's included in the Golden Door exhibition. Let me share my screen so we can see. Deborah, can you see the work? Yes, I can. Great. So there are these three works that will be in the show, that is actually in the show. Tell us uh, about this whole series. Yes, uh, all three come from a series I call Preserves, um, which uh, traces my family ancestry um, in this particular case. Um, some of them uh, speak about current uh, social political um, issues. And some of them are, I guess most of them are memory maps uh, that um, tell several different narratives. So this current one we're looking at. Mm -hmm. That one, one mm -hmm. yes. That one depicts uh, a tablecloth that was given to my mother for her wedding um, and was used through, is used throughout the years for family dinners. Um, I think about the power of association and uh, reflect on being a child, um, studying that pattern, trying to memorize that pattern, but also listening to stories about ancestry and family uh, while doing it. And are you, in terms of the material, this is drawing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, actually it's not, it's a painting. It's, well, it's a combination, but it's on board. Uh, absorbent ground is the, um, the under layer or the main layer uh, covered with ink. The black is ink and the white is painted. So, okay, so you, and what about this part is blank canvas or do you paint over? That's the absorbent ground that covers the board. And is uh, when, there a when I when I apply the absorbent ground, it behaves like paper and mm. it looks like paper. Um, and that's one of my attractions to it. And tell us the size about the work so we get some idea. This one is 36 by 36. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty uh, medium sized substantial work. Mm -hmm. And what about the number of the jars? Does that hold any significance? Um, I've been using the jar image since about 1998, 1999, and the jar is always the exact size of a canning jar. Sometimes it's that pint-sized jar, which mm -hmm. you'll see in all of these works, sometimes smaller, sometimes larger. Um, and when I choose a ground for it or a space for it, I think about how many pieces will fit in that jar. Uh, how many jars will fit in that space and how I want the viewer to to um, 
to view it. So, for mm -hmm. example, the the taller piece that we'll talk about in a little while, um, it's the same size jar, but they they fit closer together. Um, they echo my grandfather and my mother's um, food pantry. So the, this one and this one are same size. I they are. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about this one. Uh, for the viewers, you might mm -hmm. not be able to see it too clearly, but I see a lot of almost like, uh, you know, this scripting mm -hmm. and, and, and maps right. on the job. <laughs> Yes, this is, uh, these are primarily maps um, drawn by my mother over the years, which I collected. I just never threw them away. Um, and once I realized I have a collection, sometimes that inspired me to work. Um, most of them are how to get from Springfield, where I grew up, to Illinois, where one, grand, one set of uh, grandparents lived, um, to Indiana, where another set lived. So every time we would go somewhere, we were young drivers, we'd ask our mother how to get there and she could draw these maps. And um, so basically, are you uh, recording the map or are those uh, literally her handwritings, her maps? Uh, these are more drawing-like. I still consider them paintings, but they're, you know, I don't think too much about whether they're painting or drawing, but these are um, drawn exactly from my mother's maps. This one that looks very complicated is mm -hmm. from uh, two weekends of family reunions. So she sent it to me in the mail after I got home um, and it was color coded. Uh, for this uh -huh. purpose, I made it black and white, but it tracked, um, we went from Springfield to Lawrenceville, which is in the middle there, uh, Illinois. And then we went out to Princeton, to Cincinnati, to Peak Staff, we were visiting family, Carmel, Illinois, Lyle Station, Patoka, Indiana. Mm -hmm. yes. So these two works that um, it occurs to me, those are uh, very monochromatic mm -hmm. style. And your earlier work you had mentioned before that used more color. What's mm -hmm. uh, triggered this switch? Uh, I'm not sure. I think that every once in a while, every several years or so, I go back to black and white. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes I go back to drawing. Um, I try to strip away a lot of the, what I find complicated decision making that has to be done um, and go back to so what I consider very essential. So I want to talk about this piece. Mm -hmm. This piece is a bit different than the other two, but it is part of the same series. Yes, um, it's, uh, I've been working with the image of the Mason jar, uh, as I mentioned before, since 98, 99. Um, when my grandmother would open a jar of sweet pickles, for example, it seemed that stories would flow from them. I started mm -hmm. thinking about um, what's in the jar. Uh, the questions would be who's got the recipe, who made that particular jar of canned uh, vegetables or fruit. Where does that person live? Um, how do we travel from here to their house? Uh, what were the crops that season? And one of my favorite as a child, again, was uh, how is that person related to me? So I was always trying to glean this information. Um, I, I enjoy using the jar to tell these stories sometimes. Um, I feel like um, they spark a dialogue, which is interesting to me. Um, often when I am around people who are looking at these works. Uh, this particular piece records all of the images I had of my grandmothers, all the way down the middle, the cent central column. And then it pieces together, sort of a memory map, uh, pieces together uh, bits of my ancestry. So it's, I guess you'd think it's, it's coded for me and the, my family who know that history. Um, but again, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in keeping track of my history and what that might inspire other people to think about. So this central column is, is mm -hmm. your grandmother at various stages of her life? There are different grandmothers all uh -huh. the way on, on, right. you know, both sides of my family, uh, maternal I... and paternal, both sides of the family. Yeah. 
And you were able to find the actual、uh, pictures of them. Yeah, as far back as you know, pictures are made, <laughs> right? <laughs> I can.、Um, the image to the right of the woman in the center is、mm-hmm. a five great grandfather, and that's the oldest picture I have. And I'm curious about. It seems like your work is really focused on this the theme of ancestry, memory, and family history.、Mm-hmm. Um, When you focus on this, does this serve sort of like a contemplative space, or is help you to understand where you came from individually or as、uh, more of a community? I think it's both. I think the personal is universal,、mm-hmm. and I'm I'm interested more and more in in American history, thinking about.、Um, Ancestry and how their place and time lines up with events in American history. So I'm showing here some of the installation photo. So、mm-hmm. this is, I, I assume, is really part of the series,、right. and the size. Is, this is the real size of the work compared、right. to what we were seeing earlier. The two works.、Uh, is this at the John Kelly Gallery? It is that installation. There was a, a exhibition, solo exhibition called、uh, "Tongues Unspoken," and I showed three of these、uh, related works: this white and black work, as well as the sculpture you see on the side here. This one、uh, called "Yes" with the chair. It's it's called "Him," and that one's dedicated to my、uh, grandmother, my father's mother. Um, I think of all these as portals.、Um, the jar is also behaves like a portal,、um, connecting the past with the present, and I see hymns the same way. So you work in various media,、um, paintings,、uh, drawings, sculpture, and you、right. also work as a, a per- performer or sound artist. I do、uh, work with sound.、Um, I don't know if I call myself a sound artist, but I'm becoming more and more intrigued with.、Uh, I, I think this is part of why the work becomes black and white sometimes too.、Uh, stripping it down to bare essentials,、um, I'm enjoying a certain amount of void.、Um, and when I use sound, it's a different sensory、um, that I'm. Exploring, and I don't have to think about the things.、Um, so it, it's an area I enjoy、uh, right now, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see where it takes me. <laughs> Great.、Um, so I would like to actually、uh, share a video that you sent to me that tells us a little bit more about what the sound installation is like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So、uh, before I play, tell us a little bit about where this is taking place and when、okay. did it happen. Well,、uh, this summer uh, I was uh, had the great fortune of going to Art on My.、Um, they had to close down because of the pandemic, and they reopened、uh, briefly for、um, a socially distanced、uh, alumni retreat. So rather than the thirty or so international artists they would invite for Art on My, they invited twelve. From New York State only, and um, we um, we went for three weeks. And while I was there, I'd been there before in 2004, and was interested in the silo then. But、um, I think I was probably too shy to ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't want to go there yet.、Uh, right when I was there, I developed a series、um, called Tongues, where I'm using tourines and I'm playing the sound out of the. So I was walking by one day on the way from the resident to my studio, and I thought,、hmm, uh, wonder if anybody's requested this. And two,、um, that place is just so wonderful. It's a place you can explore, you know,、mm-hmm. explore your your ideas, your things. So I had the idea to、um, to project the sound from inside the silo. So you can hear it maybe a mile or so away,、um, experience it from the outside, and maybe discover it、um, by by chance, and then you can go inside and、um, and listen. Great. Let's let us hear that. One at a time, a little higher.
I think it may be playing through your earphones. I don't hear it. Okay, let me start from the beginning. Sorry. It's okay. Okay. Can you hear that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It almost brought tear into me. <laughs> so I we went to add all my recently to I love it, but also the way you use the existing, you know, equipment mm -hmm. and all that and play that. that I, I'm sorry, I can't hear you as well now. Okay, let me put it back. Okay. My, uh, my, let's see, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm just saying that I'm so touched by this. Mm -hmm. And I hope our viewers will feel the same. Mm -hmm. By the way, I also want to point out the background behind you is your work right it's yeah work. yes i started it at art on my and i'm still working with it <laughs> <laughs> um also i understand you have a solo exhibition that is mm -hmm. happening or it will open in the Hudson, new york it's actually in saugerties new york which is okay. uh yeah uh at 11 jane street and when does it open um, actually, it's 11 Jane Street Art Center, and it opens the 4th, um, and you can go to 11janestreet.com okay. and uh, find the information. And actually, it covers work from 1999 to present. I'm very much looking forward to seeing mm -hmm. that. On mm -hmm. that note, I think we will say goodbye mm -hmm. for now. Okay. And thank you. Yes, I have one more thing. Um, there's another upcoming exhibition at PAFA. Oh, fantastic. And um, yeah. what's the date for that? That one, I believe, opens the 18th, and it's an a exhibition of women artists from the collection, exploring the ideal space. Great. And we can find the details on the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Art website. Right. right. So both in November, you have a busy month. Yes, it is busy. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for speaking with us today and thank you all for listening. Come back next week where I will be speaking with another artist in the show. So bye for now. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.